I'm Chelsea and this is my 1966 Triumph 650 Richmond Matisse. So I built this bike over the space of nine months with the help and guidance from my dad who had an original 1962 Rickman Matisse which I had completely fallen in love with. I was riding it on road and off road. At the time I had a 1977 Honda CB400, a yellow one which I loved. I decided I'd sell it and it got snapped up within a week and I made quite good money on it. So I had money in the bank and I was really excited to replace it, got to move on to my next bike but nothing beat the feeling that I got from riding my dad's uh, scrambler. I'd always loved off-roading. I got my first off-road bike when I was eight and always loved classic bikes, especially classic scramblers, and this was the ultimate historic scrambler. So because my dad had an original one, we had, he needed a new fuel tank and we got to know Wasp Motorcycles. They make the frame for this bike and we discovered that they sell a, uh, a kit, so you get the frame, the fiberglass bodywork, the seat, the swinging arm, the stand, the footrests. So basically one day we decided that let's do it, let's build me a Rickman. I was completely obsessed with this project. I finished work every day, I was straight in the garage, every weekend for nine months. So I said it comes as a kit, but um, essentially you have to source a lot of parts and also put a lot of time into researching how it all goes together. Uh, so we'll start with the hubs. The hubs came off a 1975 Triumph Adventurer. They were pretty worn, they were 40 years old, so I spent a lot of time uh, polishing out the corroded pitting, getting them looking really shiny. Uh, the wheels I had made up by Brickwood Wheel Builders um, with stainless spokes and rims. The tyres are uh, Continental TKC 80s, uh, which are knobbly, they look great, I absolutely love them. The forks also came off the Triumph Adventurer in 1975. Uh, they hadn't ever been used on a bike, so they were good to go. I just had to make a small adjustment here so the mudguard fitted. Um, I made a bracket in here to uh, fit the mudguard nicely. Usually there's a, a tie that goes on the outside and I didn't really like the look of that. So the headlight and the bracket are meant for these forks. Uh, I really love the bracket. I think it's really simple, really stylish. The handlebars are a copy thanks to Wasp who uh, replicated my dad's handlebars from his original bike. The Speedo, I had a custom made calibrated to 80 miles an hour. Uh, made the bracket for it to uh, sit nicely on the top of the yoke. So the switch gear I found at Kempton Park Auto Jumble, it came off, uh, it was meant for a modern Kawasaki bike. Uh, it was black with yellow writing and it was die cast aluminium underneath so I stripped it and polished it. It looks the perfect part. The mirrors I spent ages looking for. I had a photo of uh, Steve McQueen on one of his triumphs and he had some mirrors that came underneath the bars like this. Uh, they were made by Biltwell and came from America. Uh, they weren't cheap, but um, I think they look wicked. So the frame is um, possibly the most beautiful thing. It's uh, bright nickel plated. Uh, it's got incredible brazing on it. And it's also oil in frame, which saves weight and dissipates heat. The bodywork, I went for uh, Steve McQueen Battleship Grey. Uh, Steve McQueen was a reference uh, quite often during this build. I think it's a really cool colour. I think it's quite girly, but um, people always tell me that this isn't a girly bike. The engine came out of a bike which I bought just for the engine and the registration, which meant I got a nice black number plate, but it was a 1966 Triumph Thunderbird, which had just it been imported from America. It was a runner but a real state and I stripped it down, got the engine out on the day it arrived and uh, gave it to the guy who was going to rebuild my engine for me. He has done a beautiful job of it. I have no doubts with that engine at all. Uh, I spent hours polishing the engine cases, getting them perfect because uh, they were pretty corroded and didn't look as pretty as they do now. So there's a few brackets I made under here. There's the engine head steady and also the coil and the horn are nicely tucked underneath the tank. Um, as instructed by the guy that built my engine, I got a brand new um, Amal carburetor, which came from SU Carburetors, which is also based in Salisbury. Okay, so shocks are Hagen shocks, really simple springs, really complement the bike. Um, rear hub, again, spent hours polishing that, getting the corrosion pitting out. Um, TKC 80s, again, um, the tail light, I love this part. A lot of people told me that I shouldn't put lights on this, a bike like this. Um, but Steve McQueen loved these bikes. Um, I printed off pictures of, of his Rickmans and he had one in particular, it was a road bike. 
and he had a similar tail light to this, which I had my heart set on. So I searched the internet, found this fitting, and took some modification to get it to fit the rear tail piece. But uh, it's a great replica of what he had. Indicators, I had real issues with the indicators. The brackets I made kept breaking, but um, I eventually had brackets welded onto the, the tail piece. So this takes me onto electrics, which are behind the side panel. We designed the wiring loom and made an aluminium battery box, which slots in here. It's a box attached to a side panel. And also some of the electrical bits are housed in an aluminium box, which I made, which sits on top of the air box, which you access underneath the seat. So that takes us to the pipes, which were sort of the final piece of the puzzle and also a really important ingredient in a bike build. Uh, I love these pipes, I love the look of them. They're standard Matisse pipes, but I had them sliced in two places. Uh, Tony at Lamb Engineering did that beautiful job and just heated it in here so it tucks nicely around the bike. I also had them sliced here so they were slightly shorter, like uh, how the Rickman brothers had theirs when they used to race them back in the day. When I first started the bike up, I was so happy she sounded as good as she looked. So let's take the bike outside and I'll show you how she sounds. I hope you like the bike. Thank you to everyone who helped me along the way. Um, I probably missed out loads of really important bits, but if you've got any questions, put them in the comments on the video and I'll try and answer them. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and make sure you turn alerts on so you get told when the next video is coming out.